Pontus, let me introduce you to my friend Richard. Richard is um, a relatively new angel, and we want to welcome him to the party. And he is very excited to be amongst us in the world of Angelina Jordan. And he has a lot of interesting stories and a lot of interesting views, which he's very keen to tell us all about. Uh, so, Pontus, this is Richard. Hi, Richard. Pontus, I'm so glad to meet you because I should be interviewing both of you. <laughs> How come? But because you two have allowed me to put in context what happened to me 11 weeks ago. Okay. Tell the story. <laughs> Why don't you? I was telling Alan I was living a very hobbit life, hobbit routines, hobbit friends, with no excitement. And then I heard Angelina Jordan and my world turned upside down. Wow. And in 11 weeks, I've talked to more people across this planet than I have ever could have advanced. Wow. That's powerful. Okay, well, that's all we need to hear. Thank you, Richard. It's been very Thank pleasant. you so much for having me. <laughs> we'll have to do this again sometime soon. Okay, how about we recontinue in 10 seconds? How that sound? <laughs> okay, let's continue. So what happened? How did you come across Angelina Jordan in the first place? Of course, I was on YouTube. I was very interested in the prodigy Ukrainian violinist, Carolina Pochenko. She left her country because of the war, came to Santa Barbara, and now she's playing violin on the streets of Santa Barbara. She's a big hit on YouTube. And when I was watching, there was a thumbnail of another little girl the iconic photograph of Angelina Jordan saying, I put a spell on you <laughs> with yeah. the iconic pose. I said, well, that looks interesting. I clicked on it and I never looked back. Yeah. yeah. That song really does that to you. Yes, indeed. It's so powerful. Yep. And immediately once I watched it, I said, this is so unique. And I could see how phenomenal she was, even in, in a, a, what, a four-minute clip? It blew in my mind. And I had to know who she was, where she came from, and every, anything and everything about her. Yeah. So and you then, went down the so-called rabbit hole. Yeah, but I, I liked Alan's explanation of the rabbit hole so much better. Salt mine outside of Krakow, where the cathedral was built in the Middle Ages. And that's what I found during the rabbit hole, that gorgeousness. Because Pontus, in Krakow, there is a salt mine, and down in the salt mine, there is an actual cathedral. This is a physical reality, and Polish couples and maybe international couples go there underground to the salt cathedral to get married in the cathedral. Richard, how, how would you describe your sense of yourself before watching uh, I Put a Spell on You with Angelina Jordan and after watching it. What, the transformation? Yeah, personality changes? Yes. Mood changes? <laughs> yes. All the things you guys have covered for the last three years yeah. happened to me 11 weeks ago. Yeah, that's amazing. I was always an intellectual introvert. Always the observer, never the participant. Okay. But now I talk to everyone. Mm. Just like Robert DeMartin said, once I saw her, I wanted to share her with everyone I knew. I yeah. carry my phone around. Oh, look what I found. Look what I found. <laughs> anyone I know knows that I love Angelina. You know, and I promote her or introduce her to people every day of my life. The grocery store, the gas station, the restaurant. CVS, the UPS driver, the FedEx driver. Someone else said it's like uh, 
having a little kid with you and introducing this kid and saying, this kid is going to be huge. His name is Elvis Presley. Right. And some of the looks I got were, were pretty stunning. But I persevered. I've got a lot of my friends and a lot of people I don't even know to watch her and listen to her. And it's made a big difference. And I've made some friends over it, too. Yeah. Uh, but, Richard, it's everything that you've been doing quietly behind the scenes, which has been inspired by Angelina Jordan. And that is especially the reason why Pontus and I wanted you to speak about tonight because you have uh, picked up the ball and run with it, and you've hit the ground running in terms of your enthusiasm, and you have a, a grand vision, uh, a, a grand overview of how Angelina has affected you. And to my ears, it's quite unique. It's unique, but it's not unique. And I'll t uh, make Pontus an example. He's already did what I have been envisioning. He's gotten actors, reactors, singers, artists, and fans together and produce a tribute to Angelina. He's got the community together and working together. I know what you're saying is uh, it's like the song Old Enough at Last. I just mu must point out it wasn't my idea to do that. S Steve Ackerman. Yeah, exactly. But you, you're a definite impetus in the whole project. Yes, I jumped aboard uh, as soon as I heard it, because I, like you're uh, pointing out here, it's like uh, a community uh, coming together is such a, a nice thing. And it's, it's actually like showing the world what is actually happening, that we are coming together. We are like a big family, really around right. this once in a lifetime <laughs> talent it's like, yeah we need to do something because we are influenced by her creativity that we need to do something I start this to support and he doesn't even have a patreon page he's a he's a young filmmaker in New Jersey and I saw him two weeks ago I had an instant affinity for this young man because he had loved what he was doing and he had knowledge of the videos that we watch and so I started conversing with him we had a nice email threads going and we started learning about each other. And I started to, I don't say requests anymore. I say recommendations. Mm -hmm. I started recommending videos for him to react to. And this is the other thing. When he saw the clip of Angelina doing, I'm a fool to want you. He was so giddy. And he said, I want to create. I want to create something. I want to make a film just because hearing her voice. Okay. It gave him an idea. And I'm already seeing that all of the time. I want to say thank you to this channel's new producer, Richard. Thank you so much for coming here and volunteering your time to give more information on Angelina Jordan. I started my journey this year, and he has also made donations to the GoFundMe page, and I appreciate you so much. Uh, it makes me feel like I want to create something. This song makes me want to do get out there and make a film a period piece using this song i want to i want to create something that's incredible that she makes you feel like you want to get out there and make something i want to make a film both of you started this podcast three years ago because you were compelled 
to create something. Yes. Because of the emotional effect this child from Norway has on us. Yes. And that's why I'm here, because I'm creating too. I'm creating connections with people. My next channel I want to highlight is <laughs> Joey Farrell. Yeah. Also in New Jersey. I finally saw his face too. He's been slogging away, creating this great art for over a year with no thought of himself. Even though he had a Patreon page, he never activated it until I started conversing with him. I said, Joey, let's go. Put it up. I'll be your first patron. And <laughs> I was. Yeah. <laughs> Because you're mine. What's driving you to support these reactors and these channels? What's your vision? I find genuine, authentic, and musically branded people. They have the knowledge I don't have, and I rely on them to educate me. So I find the best of the best, and I've found 14 already. And because Philip is in, on Patreon, he's got a GoFundMe page to finance his short films, and it worked out. Yeah. He educates me. Abdallah Bustani, Arab Man Reacts, is another one. He's educated me musically, and his reacts are just filled with authenticity and genuineness. Yeah. And he's got a musical library in his brain that's unmatched by anybody I've met. So that's the people I'm looking for. Assalamu alaikum, Habibati, and welcome to another Arab Man Reacts. When you say you uh, get educated, I, I have the same feeling there because when I started out with listening to Angelina Jordan, I wasn't that into music at all, really. I listened to music, but I didn't know much about it. Uh, and I've learned so much from all these vocal coaches and reactors and just ordinary people just listening and reacting to Angelina Jordan. Yeah, she gave that back to me because I was into music when I was younger. But I lost it. <laughs> and it didn't come back until I started to listen to her. And I've told Alan this before. She gave me back the awe of the beauty of sound yeah. and actually the beauty of all things around us. Yeah. Because it's really education with a capital E. It's not just education about music. It's educating about how much broader and deeper we can feel. And it's educating about the unseen community we have around us, which we then can see and develop and make contact. So the education is on so many levels. It's not just a musical education. That's true. It is. And that's exactly right. Because some of these reactors react emotionally because they can't help it. And that educates all of us that we need emotional intelligence and emotional balance. Some of the people that I'm surrounded with uh, that doesn't really get Angelina. I get a sense that it's somehow people that don't want to open up to emotions. Because I think that is one of the keys here. It's you got to let your guard down a little bit and let the emotions into you to get that kind of connection that is really important between the performer and the audience, the listener. And uh, for me, Angelina did that right away. It was like a lightning strike when I first heard her. And so I guess I'm one of those people that are quite open to emotions. But I get the sense that people that are not, they tend to take a while to break down <laughs> when listening. And that's absolutely true. And everybody takes it at their own pace. Yeah. 
And you can actually see it in some of the reactors that, okay, they're doing it because it gets views and everything, but they don't really get her. And then they do another one and then the third one. And maybe on the fourth time, they like just get it. You can almost see it in their eyes. And I call that the epiphany. They have an epiphany when they finally, oh, this is beautiful. And I'm moved. I'm touched. My heartstrings have been pulled. But in the Angelina Jordan community, we have a lot of scientists and we have a lot of professors and we have a lot of engineers. We have a lot of highly intellectual professional people. And by nature, they may not be overly emotional and yet they are still reached. Maybe, for example, the scientists will say, oh, yes, that's very interesting. And I'm intrigued. I've not heard quite anything like that. They may react in a very non-emotional way, but then the rationale for them might then be like a quicksand, and they may be sucked in via their rationale into a new world, and that may lead to who knows where. And didn't you do a podcast with the scientists talking about hormones and endorphins and dopamine and serotonin? At any rate, we can go down that whole thing about biochemistry, or we can talk about the effect that it has on us. That's more important. I think it is, too. They can do their studies. We can enjoy this journey. Yeah. What type of effects do you uh, contribute to beginning to listening to Angelina Jordan in your life? Oh, from introvert to extrovert to observer to be a participant to beginning to create and those are the main effects but also i'm more kind i'm more kind i'm a better person yeah i see the goodness in people even ones that aren't so good isn't that amazing yeah. It is the true miracle of this phenomena. If you find religion, you can understand why these things happen to you. But just to hear a little girl sing and have this type of reaction, this is the most mind-boggling thing. And this is really why Pontus and I started this podcast, because uh, Pontus looked at me and I looked at Pontus and we said, what is going on? We have to talk about what is going on. And we're still talking about it. Yeah, three years later. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, gentlemen, I've only been doing this for 11 weeks. <laughs> yeah, you have a long way to go. <laughs> I'm the true newbie mm. in all this. I haven't been called a newbie for 45 years. <laughs> it is so refreshing. Yeah, And I use the new founded kindness within me I use that a lot in my life now these days. I'm working with education nowadays and, and I'm doing like, like classes for grown-ups in business. Uh, and I have to use that uh, newfound power within me in those situations all the time. And I'm, I'm so looking forward to this in a whole different way than I used to do because I used to see the challenge as a little bit scary but now these days i see the challenge more yes let's do this let's bring these people together and let's have fun and let's enjoy one another's company in a whole different way than i used to do that your acts of kindness are reciprocated are you getting more kindness back to you yes it's Difficult to say if it's in the eye of the beholder or if it's really there. But I started a new class, and uh, and this uh, particular class I've ha I have in mind, they uh, they started with me, so I was the first teacher, and then other teachers came along, and and so so this was like an opportunity to build the groups, and I've heard that this group has so much like a small community, and they're really happy. They're having an affinity for each other. Yes. Uh, and I think that has to do with the kind of vision I'm having now these days because of my 
sense of what Angelina is all about when it comes to kindness and that sort of philosophy, really. She doesn't even say much about it. She just says, let's be kind to one another. But uh, it's also the way that she affects me every day when I listen to her songs. I get emotional every single day, and that sort of brings out a new me. And I'll relate a case for myself. I've come to the conclusion there's a balance. There's a balance in emotional life. If I'm not moved to tears by something of beauty, I don't have a fulfilling day. And the flip side is, if I don't have a belly laugh every day, I don't have a fulfilling day. So it's the emotional balance that we're all striving for the inner life. And then it irradiates out from us to the other because of a child from Norway. The other thing which is not very much talked about is the way Angelina Jordan's life has been chronicled and captured on video. And for people like us and all the angels, there's just so much material that we can follow of her growing up and her interviews and her TikTok performances and so much background information that Angelina Jordan doesn't need to say much because we can see the progression and we can see all of the influences of where she has reached today. And she is very much a 21st century product of technology in its best sense because yeah. everything is there for us to view in its full glory. And of course, when I first read her book, it was like a confirmation for me that this is the real deal. This is not something just in my head that I enlarge things or fantasize and just dream about. This is actually true, that she is a prodigy and she has these emotions and feelings and thoughts that she really wants to communicate and she does communicate to us. I don't know if you have the chance yet, Richard, to, to read her book, but something I recommend. I intend to. You will find it very eye-opening because it's like you can draw so many parallels to what she's done in her life since she wrote the book. It's like a, a vision, in a way, for some of her songs. Absolutely. And I believe she's had the vision since she was six. And it's being foretold. Ten years later, here we are. And it will come to pass. It's inevitable. I don't know if you gentlemen know about Jungian theory about universal consciousness. I'm thinking two billion people is needed for the rest of the people to follow. If we get two billion people on a higher plane, we can turn the planet around. So when Angelina Jordan's Bohemian Rhapsody has 2 billion views, then it will be a, a new generation, right? I hope so. Time will tell. But I think our work in the community is part of that effort. To reach more people on more continents to hear the voice. It's not work. It's more like a calling. It's a mission. Yeah. Hmm. And that's how I see it, not being a missionary and not being a zealot, just spreading the word. The podcast that Pontus and I do actually sprung up and began organically because Pontus and I, we would Zoom regularly and we would have such interesting animated conversations that we more or less said, actually, we should record these because this is fun and this would be a benefit. And I'm so, so glad just... you did. <laughs> It's just almost like an extension of our spontaneous friendship. And mm. it, it was organic. And so many choices we made were no-brainers. Ponta said to me 18 months ago, Alan, you and I should do a documentary together. And I said, Pontus, great idea. <laughs> I, I wish I had thought of that. <laughs> and gentlemen, it's a beautiful thing to behold. Huh? It really is. It's both Pontus and I have more come out of ourselves 
whether we can say we were a little bit more introverted, but I speak for myself, my conversational skills 24 seven now are much improved simply from doing this podcast, because mm. I've learned to be able to think on my feet as I'm speaking. And that's what the art of conversation is alive and well. And it's a beautiful thing. You guys are amazing. It's also like you uh, started out saying, Richard, with uh, the community and getting friends all around the globe. That's oh, just yeah. a, a beautiful thing. I've never had anything like it. No, not in my life. No. And I've been around the sun 71 times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To have, to be able to talk to a gentleman in Sweden and to yeah. be able to talk to a gentleman in London and talk to my friend in Beirut and Alan's friend that I joined her Patreon page in Paris, that's a phenomenal experience for yeah. myself yeah. in 11 weeks. When, when I flew to Geneva last year, um, my friend, the scientist, happens to work at the CERN Institute and he said, Alan, would you like a tour and see what we do here? And I said, of course I would. And it's not just a matter of the CERN Institute, but for me, this is an example of the unlimited nature of the human imagination. And yeah. this is why we are Angelina Jordan fans, because this also touches the unlimited nature of the human imagination. Yeah. And that's the CERN Collider. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's great. I wish I was there because I love science. I love it. I I can't get enough of empirical facts. Yeah. Not opinions, just what we can observe totally and dispassionately. And then transcend that into the supernatural because science can't give us all the answers. Exactly. That's why we're Angelina Jordan fans, because science cannot give us all the answers. <laughs> were you not uh, able to go to the concert? I had made obligations before I ever knew her name. Yeah, mm -hmm. me too. Yeah, so I couldn't do it. I do plan to go to wherever she is touring next. Yeah. Because I got to meet, meet all the guys I've met. Yeah, exactly. There's t two good reasons to go to a concert. It's Angelina Jordan, of course, and it's also the community that we get together and uh, talk know. to each other. That's so brilliant. Yes, indeed. Well, I need to bring up one other gentleman. His name is Alex, and he has a reactor channel in Italy. Phenomenal man. He's a metalhead of all things. And, uh, Metallica is his Bible. Yeah. But he's done 50 reactions to Angelina. And I just submitted four more recommendations. Man is the sweetest, tough guy I know. So check him out. Alan's already knows who he is. Get a couple clips of his reactions because the guy's good. Yeah. And he loves music. Too late. My time has come. Wow. God. Wow. Wow. Okay, okay. Uh, I was... Man, wow. Great. Okay, now I got it. Why, like, you know, all that comments over there. Richard, it's been great having you on. And we have never had someone who is so new to Angelina Jordan before. And we are catching you in the steep part of your trajectory. And long may you continue up into the heavens. Yeah, I, I don't see it ending myself. No. My plan is for another 30 trips around the sun. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Richard. You, yeah, you've, thank you've you, been Richard. A, you've been a wonderful guest. Gentlemen, the thanks is all to you. Truly. Thanks. Good night now. <laughs>